Merci. So, um, I want to talk about how gender and sexuality has influenced the technology that we build, as well as uh, the reverse. They're two actually very linked together. They're very, uh, they're very related. Um, you can see some pretty obvious assumptions in the uh, gender and sex drop-down menus on many websites here um, uh, about what was appropriate options to put in these in these lists, right? You know, sex one down on the left, very, uh, very limited, very lack of anything. So now, why is this a question that's important now? Why is it even relevant? It's because today, for the first time in history, people were able to explore sociosexual interaction with each other, as well as their gender identity, in physically zero-risk environments. This is completely virtual. Um, no, it really is completely virtual. I don't like that. Um, <laughs> furthermore, technology itself can define what's normal. It can really be um, part of people's lives. It's, for example, how we move from uh, piracy all the way to sharing. Right? When that becomes good, it becomes integrated in the way people live. It becomes part of their lifestyle, who they are, and how they express themselves. Um, so there are lots of sites popping up around the uh, web. Uh, Beyond Masculinity is a site that talks about gender and uh, politics. Bedposted.com is a web application that allows you to track your sexual encounters with other people online. Genderreport.com is force and progeny in a blog uh, with uh, pictures and other means. Um, Safe2P.org is a website that allows uh, gender variant people to find safe public restrooms to use, uh, to use in public. So it's not just um, sites, but also culture, free and open source software. Uh, and the, the ideals therein have inspired home conferences like Bar Camp, which itself has inspired home conferences like Queer Camp and King Crawl. So to give you just some ideas of just how variant and diverse this really is, um, these are some of the 925 total options that you can use to self-identify your gender with on the Yay Gender Forum website. Um, uh, and out of 925 options combined with the other 925 options gives you more uh, possible combinations than the number of elementary particles in the universe. That would take 116 Ooh. bytes to encode in computers if each option were a bit. In contrast, ISO 5218 gives you four mutually exclusive options. Of course, it only takes two bits to encode. Kind of limiting, though. Um, so these things aren't new. These things have been around for a very long time. But it's because of the way that we're using technology today that we're able to finally rethink some of these assumptions. And we have now the capability to have these conversations in public, in open, with a certain amount of cyber anonymity. We're freer for it. Uh, social networks, for example, like Twitter, that would be me, um, uh, is pretty confronting at first. But this is also how, especially the younger generation, is presenting themselves and creating a persona of who they are and who they want to be. Um, these are just people being themselves, like me. Um, so you can begin to see how uh, these kind of drop-down menus begin to see, feel very uh, limiting and uh, very exclusionary to a lot of people. We, we, a lot of people think of this as, if I don't fit into these two options, which are the only option this site feels is worthwhile being, then this service isn't for me, or this isn't really welcoming for me. Um, you have to really dissect a lot of your assumptions when you start to uh, think about this. Gender isn't the same as sex, and it's the words that we use to communicate with one another and that teaches us about ourselves, but also infuse the technology that we have of, uh, with, with knowledge of who we are and, and, and how we want to interact with the land around us. Here's an example of a marriage database uh, that Sam Hughes writes about, which is I pop in with sexes. As you can see, here's a male uh, male table has the Wi-Fi ID column, literally saying, why is the wall two males? Uh, probably not anymore, um, although that was probably has in the past. People see this uh, uh, as actually how gender exists uh, in their head. This is how they think of it. When they see two men getting married, they say that, uh, you know, which one is the wife? It doesn't compete for them. They don't understand that at this level of the stack, so to speak, um, these two sexes are actually interchangeable. So here's Sam's um, uh, uh, example of a marriage database that's completely free of gender and sexuality assumptions. It allows any human to marry any other human any number of times in any number of ways. He creates ultimately what's called a graph, which you would know as a social network. Um, now, this is actually technically illegal to implement today because it's too open. Uh, you have to add so much business logic to that just to make it legal. Gender binaries limit everyone. It's not just technologists and gender queer people, but anyone who interacts with people in their day-to-day -day lives, uh, social media experts, uh, marketers, uh, user experience designers, everyone's limited by their assumptions of what gender is and how people should behave. When in fact, we know that gender is not really standing solely from anatomy. Uh, there's wide variances of behavior in between uh, men and women, uh, in feminine men, masculine women, and so on and so forth. So um, how do you do things well? How do you do, build your things well, do it, and, and do good at the same time? Well, you've got to ask yourself some pretty basic questions. But these questions you should be asking yourself anyway. The rules of good design are not different for gender-variant people as they are for other people. But you've got to be 
uh, thinking critically about what you're building and why and how you're doing it. Do you really care if your customer has a penis if what you actually want to know is how to address them on a telephone when they call customer service? Probably not. If you don't need sexuality information, you don't need to ask for it. I'm not asking for race here. You don't necessarily need to, need to ask for gender um, either, especially in a hotspot scenario for your Wi-Fi. So uh, the key takeaway is to really, you have the possibility of being limiting or accepting in your interaction with the world around you and who you interact with. So we say, don't limit. It's not only um, a bad user experience, it's also often very technically unsound uh, as well. Thank you very much.